Hey guys, it's Miss Future, and this video is about solving absolute value equations. So let's start with a formal definition of absolute value. And here I've sketched a graph of it. If I were to write this as a piecewise function, the absolute value um, of x is going to be, if I were to look at this side of it, just this line, the line is y equals x for all x is greater than or equal to 0. And if I were to look at this side of it, it is all negative x's for x is less than 0. And I just arbitrarily put the equal to on the top one. It can be on either one, just not both. But what I'm pointing out to you then is that the absolute value of x is the positive and the negative values of x. Positive for x is greater, negative for x is less than 0. So we could take like the absolute value of x minus 3. And that's going to be x minus 3 for x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, which is the same thing as x is greater than or equal to 3. And negative x minus 3. Make sure that's in parentheses for x minus 3 is less than 0 or x is less than 3. So the reason I just went through that with the pictures is so that you can see why we, we're going to do what we're going to do when we solve our equations. And this is a little crooked, but basically, step one, you're going to have to isolate the absolute value on the left side of the equation. Um, get it all by itself before you can do anything else. Step two, we're going to split the equation into two equations. We're going to solve it twice using our formal definition. We're going to do one for the positive version and one for the negative version. And then step, step three, we're going to solve each equation. And step four, we're going to check our solutions because sometimes we can get a solution that's not actually correct. So we have to check them every time. It's not because we make a mistake. It's because we get things that are um, extraneous. So now I'm just going to walk you through a whole bunch of examples, and we will practice solving equations with absolute value. Okay, let's start with the absolute value of 2x minus 3 and then minus 4 equals 3. And we're going to solve for x. So the first thing we have to do is isolate the absolute value. 2x minus 3, the absolute value of 2x minus 3, and then we're going to add 4 to the other side, so equals 7. Then we're going to split the equation into 2. We're going to go the positive version of 2x minus 3 equals 7, and we're going to go the negative version, so negative 2x, and make sure you put it in parentheses. Minus 3 equals 7. It has to go in parentheses. All right, let's solve the left side, or the, the first one here. 2x minus 3 equals 7. 2x equals 10. x equals 5. Over here, I'm going to divide by my negative. 2x minus 3 equals negative 7. I'm going to add 3. 2x equals negative 4. And I'm going to divide. x equals negative 2. So we've got two value, two answers, which makes sense because this makes a V. So we're going to have two X's that give us a Y of 3. So remember now, step 4 is check to be sure. So we're going to go over here. I'm going to use pink. And we're going to plug in a 5, absolute value of 2 times 5 minus 3. And make sure you're plugging it into the original, not into something that you simplified. So we've got 10 minus 3 minus 4 equals 3. Absolute value of 10 minus 3 is 7. 7 minus 4 is 3. That is true. We'll, pl we'll check the other one. Uh, I'm running out of space here, but hold on. Okay, I moved it. Ha -ha. So we have 2 times negative 2 minus 3. Absolute value of that minus 4 should give us 3. So the absolute value of 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7, and the absolute value of negative 7 is 7, and 7 minus 4 equals 3. So we have checked it. They both work. So now we're happy that the answer, the solution is negative 2 and 5. Now I'm going to prove it to you graphically. Um, we've got the absolute value of 2x minus 3, and then minus 4 equals 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this and I'm going to graph three separately, and we're going to find the intersection. And there, the, there it is. Our intersections are at 5 and negative 2. All 
right, here's your next example. Absolute value of 5x minus 9 equals x plus 3. So this one's different because it has an x outside the absolute value as well. All right, so the first thing we do is isolate the absolute value. It already is. And then I'm going to take the, both the positive version, 5x minus 9. You just do it as is, equals x plus 3. And then you do the negative version, equals x plus 3. So you're going to do both problems. So over here, if I subtract x from both sides and add 9 to both sides, 4x equals 12, and I divide, and I get x equals 3. Over here, if I distributed my negative, I'd have minus 5x plus 9. And if I subtracted x from both sides, I'd get negative 6x. And if I subtracted 9 from both sides, 3 minus 9 is negative 6. So negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1. And then we will check it. So we're going to take the absolute value of 5 times 3 minus 9 should equal 3 plus 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 minus 9 is 6. And the absolute value of 6 is 6. And that equals 3 plus 3, which is 6. So it works. OK, let's try the other one. Um, absolute value of 5 times 1 minus 9 equals 1 plus 3. So 5 minus 9 is negative 4. Absolute value of negative 4 is 4. And 4 does equal 4. So it checks out. Both of the solutions are good. x equals 3 and x equals 1. OK, here's another example. 4 minus 2 times the absolute value of 6 minus 3x equals 8. All right, so the first thing we do, remember, is we isolate the absolute value. So I need to subtract 4 from both sides. And then I need to divide both sides by negative 2. And then when you get here, hopefully you will see that the absolute value of anything can never equal a negative number. Never. So there are no x's that work for that. So we would say no solution. Now, if you were to go back and solve it, um, you might get some x values, and then you could plug them in, and you would see. When you check it, you'd be like, absolute value is positive, so it can't be negative. And then maybe at that point, you would realize. But if you get to this point, and you say, well, that's negative, you can stop. It's no solution. Here's another one. Absolute value of x minus 3 equals 3x plus 5. So we've isolated the um, absolute value already. Now I'm going to take the positive version of it and the negative version of it. Don't forget those parentheses. OK, so over here, if I combine like terms, I have negative 2x equals 8, x equals negative 4. And over here, um, if I distribute my negative and then combine like terms, I have negative 4x equals 2, x equals negative 1 half. So now we need to check those. And I'm going to check them by plugging into the original. So negative 4 minus 3, the absolute value of that should equal 3 times negative 4 plus 5. Absolute value of negative 7 should equal 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 plus 5. Absolute value of negative 7 is 7. Negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. Those are not equal. That tells me that negative 4 is extraneous. It's not going to work. Now let's try negative 1 half. So I do negative 1 half minus 3. Absolute value of that should equal 3 times negative 1 half plus 5. All right, so negative 1 half times th or minus 3 is negative 3.5. And 3 times negative 1 half is going to be negative 3 halves, or negative 1.5 plus 5. The absolute value of negative 3.5 is 3.5. And negative 1.5 plus 5 is 3.5. That works. So the only answer to this one is x equals negative 1 half. 
Okay, one more example. Absolute value of x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 7. So we've got a quadratic. Same rules apply. We're going to do the positive version of it and the negative version of it. Once again, don't forget your parentheses. So here, I don't know if you guys remember how to solve quadratics. We haven't hit that chapter yet in Algebra 2, but you always want to set it equal to 0. So I take away 7 from both sides and I get minus 12 equals 0. Over here, um, well let's just finish what we're doing here. To, fact, to solve, you've got to factor or use the quadratic formula. Um, so this actually will factor. Factors of negative 12 that add to negative 4 are going to be negative 6 and positive 2. And when we solve each factor, we set each one equal to 0, and we get 6 and negative 2 for x. So hang on to that, and we will try it in just a minute, but let's solve the other one. So now I have negative x squared plus 4x plus 5 equals 7. Um, so I've got negative x squared plus 4x, 5 minus 7 is minus 2. And whenever we factor, we want this one to be positive. So if I just divided everything by negative 1, that would be fine. This quadratic isn't going to factor because there's nothing that multiplies to give you 2 that adds to give you negative 4. So in this case, we'll use the quadratic formula. Do you remember it? It goes x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Where a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is 2. So, negative b would be negative negative 4, which is 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 4 squared is 16, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2, all over 2 times 1. So we have 4 plus or minus, and then 4 times 2 is 8, 16 minus 8 is 8. So 4 plus or minus the square root of 8, all over 2. We can simplify our radical because square root of 8 is 2 root 2. And now all of those are divisible by 2. And we get 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 2 root 2 divided by 2 would be the square root of 2. So I also have two answers for this one. So if you recall from before, our answers were 6 and negative 2. And for this one, I have 2 plus the square root of 2. And I have 2 minus the square root of 2. So we can check those all. We can plug them all back in and prove it algebraically, or we could graph it. And I'm going to graph this one just to show you what it looks like because it's kind of neat. All right, here it is. Look, when you take the absolute value of a quadratic, so the absolute value of a parabola, you have your parabola, but everything that was below the x-axis gets reflected back up above, and then there's the rest of the parabola. It's kind of like a W now. We just took the bottom half, the part that used to be down here, and it gets reflected over the x-axis because we're taking the absolute value. And then we wanted to know where it equaled 7. Well, there's 7. So there's negative 2. There's 6. And then this is 2 plus the square root of 2 and 2 minus the square root of 2. So it works out just fine. And that's it for today's video. You guys have a great evening, and I'll see you tomorrow.